Yeah, Joe built that head and the tail. Hastily. Hastily. (laughs) I was about to say, like, yeah, I didn't think he bought it. (laughs) I didn't think they were just selling it at the store like that. Is it a train decorated like a mouse? Or within the logic of this universe, is it Mm. half mouse, half train? It's half mouse, half train. Dear God. (laughs) But he transports cheese even, even though you would think he would just eat the cheese. The track never allows him to wrap oh around God. that tight to eat his own He's, he's going to rise up against his masters for sure. <laughs> what does he get paid? Exposure. <laughs> Exposure. <laughs> it's the Olivia and Joe Cheese Show. Welcome back to a wonderful new episode of the Cheese Show. And our special guest today, hilarious comedian, Daniel Crow. Hello. I heard that you're like sort of like a picky eater. Yeah. My, my diet is very much, it never progressed past the age of six. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor has it that you've never had a salad before. Rumor is true. <laughs> oh, we usually make big salads for people before the show, and we're like, this guy, we don't have to do anything. Thanks for rebranding the salad show for one episode <laughs> only for me. This last weekend, we were invited to the Cheesemonger Invitational, where cheesemongers from around the world will come and compete to be crowned the best cheesemonger of the year. And they have like 50 or 60 vendors all over the place and you and go to like each table. it's like all you can eat cheese. Honestly, after the first hour, you get f-ing sick of cheese. <laughs> Not me. No. So while we were there, we found a goat cheese that's a brand new invention. It is the newest technology in goat cheese. <laughs> Scientists have been working around the clock. And it just seemed like the perfect cheese for you. Depending on what this cheese is, I'm about to feel real judged <laughs> as you send goat cheese filled with gummy bears at me. Well, shall we bring it on in? Yeah, yeah. Thomas the Stink Engine, folks. For any loyal viewers of the cheese show, I asked them what the story is, and it's not a train decorated like a mouse. It is a mouse train hybrid canonically within, <laughs> yes. within the world of the cheese show. That is an atrocity and a front to God. <laughs> and we had to have this secretly commissioned in a lab in China. <laughs> oh my God, is that the reason COVID got started? You made them make the mouse train? Today's cheese is chocolate and cherry goat cheese made by Vermont Creamery. It looks holiday Christmassy. It looks like a Yule log. So it is a goat cheese infused with chocolate and cherries, and then it is hand rolled in these mini chocolate chips. First Dr. Pepper, now goat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Vermont Creamery is like known for their goat cheese. All right, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I didn't make it work. <gasps> wow. Yeah, that's fudge. <laughs> fudge. That's so good. It's yeah, very dessert. You can taste some cherry. That goaty like tanginess to it though is oh. really nice. It like balances it out. Right at the end you can taste the goat. Mm-hmm. I got, I'm really focused on the phrase you can really taste the goat. No. <laughs> I do like it. I find it may be limited in its use as a cheese. Mm. Yeah, it's not very versatile. Has has the mouse train ever made a move on the cheese? Have you ever <laughs> just tried to get some? I'm imagining some sort of action film thing where he comes alive, <laughs> jumps off the track that you can't hold me back anymore. One day we have to have a special announcement. We're like, guys, we have bad news. We had to put the mouse train down today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I've well, I, I was gonna say derailed, but I don't want to use that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've taken the show in a different, no, not a different track. Hang on. <laughs> Just changed the direction that it's going to. Because are his organs inside of the train? <laughs> I'm imagining he's like where they would shovel coal. Instead, they're just shoveling cheese into a burn. <laughs> that's what's powering him. All right, Daniel. Yes. So what's the cheesiest music that you enjoy? I'll start by saying I know on an objective level this song is terrible. But I heard it when I was a little kid and I've never stopped liking it. And I know it represents by far the worst era of one of the greatest bands in American history. But I love Kokomo by the Beach Boys <laughs> so much. I love Kokomo. I get that that was a time when John Stamos was in the band <laughs> playing steel drums. I know Brian Wilson wasn't there. I never thought you'd say early 90s Beach Boys. Well, that's because it's late 80s, so maybe watch your tone. That's why I've never gone to see the Beach Boys, because I don't know what bastardized version of them is gonna show up. Is it just gonna be the one dude with the giant forehead? And Al Jardine? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Al Jardine will play with Beach Boys, but he'll also go on tour with Brian Wilson. Yeah. You can't escape Al Jardine. <laughs> He's coming to haunt you no matter what version you're going to see. <laughs> He's getting that check, man. Yeah. Yeah, because when I was like, 
three or something, my parents, they had a CD that was just the best of the Beach Boys. How do they feel about Kokomo? You know, I've never sat them down and asked. <laughs> you should ask them. What's the cheesiest thing you've ever spent a lot of money on? I don't know if it's technically cheesy. I guess I technically once spent $1.7 million on a fake ID that never arrived. Wait, what? what? I'm confused. I was 19. Yeah. I needed a fake ID to perform on some shows at some venues that weren't letting me in that I was booked at. Yeah. Friend of mine goes, I can get you a fake ID through this website called The Silk Road. You're going to need to get something called Bitcoin. Yeah. Circa 2011. Oh my God. My name was about $2 a Bitcoin. So I spent 25 Bitcoin on a fake ID that never arrived, which I wasn't even going to use to do anything <laughs> fun. Like I wasn't gonna go out drinking oh, with friends or anything. I was gonna use this to do to, to, to open mics. <laughs> At the peak of Bitcoin's value, that was about $1.7 million that I spent on a fake ID that never arrived. That's yeah. the best story I've ever heard. What is the cheesiest fandom you've ever been a part of? Ooh, I'm really excited about this. I am Because I feel too. like you're part of a lot of fandoms. You're like a fandom kind of guy, aren't you? I love all things PBS and NPR. Ooh. I love that stuff. I mean, Terry Gross. One oh, of the yeah. best interviewers of our time. Hello, Terry. We love you, Terry. Me and her go to the same barber. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if that's a goof or not. <laughs> that's just Joe making fun of her haircut. Her NPR haircut. <laughs> you know, she's Terry, but it seems like you're the gross one. <sighs> Ooh, wow. Listen, my American tax dollars pay her salary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's mostly member funding. <laughs> mostly viewers like you. I had a dream once that I was being chased by the big PBS head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can't tell, I was a huge Mr. Rogers fan. So this is definitely an homage to him. Yeah, a fromage sure. to him. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of PBS, me and Olivia, we fall asleep almost every night watching Antiques, Antiques Roadshow. Roadshow. Oh yeah. If you're ever in the mood to change it up a bit, there's a British version. Oh, the British but, one's oh, way better. Okay, yeah, all right, all right. We'll go yeah. back and forth because it's like the British one's like, this is a, a 14th century silver goblet. And then they go the American version, like this is a 1970s Garfield waffle maker. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, would you rather have the goblet or the waffle maker though? I don't know. It depends if it's the limited edition. I don't, I'm not good at Mondays. <laughs> well, I don't know. How did you mess up Garfield's <laughs> catchphrase? He likes I'm lasagna. Not, I'm not good at Mondays. <laughs> Wait, what is it? I don't I do Mondays. I hate Mondays. I hate Mondays. How about a Garfield waffle maker that you can also cook lasagna in? I'm trying to imagine a His lasagna His version of a George waffle. Foreman grill that makes <laughs> yeah. lasagna. Hey, did you hear Garfield made more money off of those lasagna <laughs> makers than he ever did for boxing? <laughs> God, I would pay so much money to watch Garfield box George Foreman. How did we get here? This is what chocolate goat cheese does to your brain. <laughs> All right, Crow, mm -hmm. what is your cheesiest TV show that you enjoy? You know, the last several questions I've answered really have made me look quite elderly, so let's keep up with <laughs> the tradition. I, I love Jeopardy. Quite a bit. I like Jeopardy. You don't like it as much as I like Jeopardy. <laughs> I'm in the contestant pool to be on. I passed all their tests. Wait, uh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Are you staying for 18 months? So I'm in through the end of the year. They could call me on. But Jeopardy, you have to have Crow. He's well, so good. Fingers crossed. So have you like seen every episode that there's ever been? <laughs> no, because they've been on since the 60s. Well, okay. <laughs> since, since you started watching. Uh, there's a site, j-archives.com. Check it out. They archive every Jeopardy game. Mm. If I miss a game, I will just go on and read the games later that night and <laughs> score myself. Them. Do you stick around for Wheel of Fortune? I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I have standards. <laughs> well, do you want to do the song? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Kokomo? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. What's the matter with the cheese I'm eating? Can't you tell I got a sweet tooth? Maybe I should buy a new goat cheese and have a one that tastes like Baby Ruth. So spend your money on a new kind of dairy. One that's made with cocoa and a little bit of cherry. No funk, goat hunk, spread yourself a big chunk of still chocolate bowl to me. Oh, Ruba, Jamaica. No, 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 no. Ooh, I wanna take it. <laughs> what do you rat this cheese, buddy? Uh, I give it five rats out of five. You gotta respect the attempt. I'd rather someone try a fun new thing than just do the same old thing. <laughs> that said, can't give it like more than one slice at a time, because it is rich. We have one last thing we need to do. We're gonna figure out how cheesy you are 
based on your answers based on you your gave answers us. Today. You got the Jeopardy. That's more of a smart person thing. Again, there's nothing smart about knowing <laughs> trivia. It's just memorization. It's definitely cheesy. Everything's super, super smart, except when you get to Kokomo. So <laughs> I also spent $1.7 million on a fake idea oh, I didn't get. That's the fake that's idea. That's the craziest story we've ever had. I'd say Crow's more nerdy than cheesy. I, I'm going fondue because it's fun. It's like a fountain. It's like silly. But then it's also like refined. So I agree. Yeah. He's a fondue. Yeah. Daniel Crow is a fondue. Thank you. Well, that's been the cheese show. We'll catch you next rind. Sorry to string you along. A gouda, a cheddar, ooh, I wanna shred ya. Burrata, ricotta, I'm so glad I bought a Asiago, manchego, bowl of liquid queso. Try a little cocoa, oh. We'll bite it fast and then we'll eat it slow. Chocolate cheese from a goat. We're eating cocoa mold.